Hey, I'm so excited. We're gonna work with acrylic enamel paints. It's one of my favorite uh, mediums to work with uh, in torch enameling. So let's get started. Now, we're gonna skip ahead uh, to a, the front of the design because I really wanna focus our attention on uh, showing you these two effects. And so on our website, you're gonna see a lot of what I'm moving through, and that's the counter enameling process and also prepping your metal. We're working with copper discs today, and prior to cleaning, I want you to hole punch your project. And you can see that I have punched my hole. Now I need to clean the metal as well. And we're gonna use a copper cleaner to actually do that. And you'll clean it off with a little bit of water and dry it off before you add a black counter enamel. And the counter enamel is gonna stabilize the front side of the piece. And I'm using the same black that I did in the last segment. So this is a piece that's ready to be counter enameled. You are also gonna fire that counter enamel and you can see that I've fired the black counter enamel as well. Now when you fire it, you're gonna have an oxidation, a, a, a fire scale on the back. That too needs to be removed. You use the same copper cleaner, get rid of it, you're cleaning it. I have a, a, a little toothbrush that I like to use to help with that. And then you're ready to add the front, side, uh, the front side color. And in this case, we're using titanium white. It's the brightest white within the enameling colors. And it offers such a, a, a contrast to the paints that we're working with today. So it's one of my favorite colors. Again, all of the steps that we've covered to get up to this point are gonna be on our website. So I encourage you to head on over there and take a peek so you can uh, learn how to do all of that. Now, we're gonna add our counter, I'm sorry, rather our front side color. Now you can see I've got my little baby sifter. I also have a stilt that's gonna hold the piece up, but there's a couple of things that are missing. I really want to encourage you, strongly encourage you to wear your dust mask. I'm going to forego that today so you can hear my directions clearly. You might even wanna put on your safety goggles at this point because we're getting ready to fire. So we have our, count, uh, rather our enamel for the front side. You're gonna scratch, add the enamel, and I like to follow the shape of the metal. And in this case, I'm moving in a circular uh, motion. And I'm going to pick it up directly from that. See how easy that is? A lot of people uh, tell me, oh, I can't pick up the, the copper with tweezers. So that's a great tip for you to use. This piece is ready to be fired. I have it on my kiln brick. I have it on my stainless steel trivet. And one of the things I wanna mention to you is you're gonna see a color change. And I don't want you to be alarmed by it. Once the project's cooled, it's going to come back to its natural, beautiful white. Let's take a look. As we're firing, it'll go through all the stages of enamel. You'll see sugar coat, you'll see orange peel, and then you'll see a, a, a final fused enamel, nice and glossy, flat, and there we go. You can see that color change right there, and we're done. We're gonna allow that um, project to cool just uh, a little bit, and then we are going to add our uh, work, or rather our paint, to our surface. So I have a piece that's been fired and cooled, and we're ready to add our paint. This is an acrylic enamel paint for glass. You should not use acrylic craft paint, acrylic enamel craft paint. So we have uh, put our paint into our little cup, and we want a watery, uh, mixture, so I'm gonna add a little bit of paint first, and a little bit of water. And I really wanna make sure that I have a generous amount of water on there. I'm gonna set that set down right there. Now I have a lot of trivets today, and uh, I'm gonna place it on my trivet. Now, this project hasn't cooled very uh, much and I want to actually remove it so, to make room for my new project. So I'm going to grab a pair of pliers to do so because the trivet is very, very hot. And you'll notice that my pliers look like they've been around a long time. I don't like to use my best uh, wire tools uh, with this. I, I like to use metal tools that um, have, you know, can be used with hot uh, trivets. So now I'm able to pick this guy up and put him 
where he needs to go. I'm going to set these over here. Now I'm going to use my torch to uh, actually help the water evaporate. I am not fully firing this piece, and I'm actually not going to hit the copper piece with my torch flame. I'm going to use the heat to create a bubble effect. So you, you want to get in. There you go, there you go and get out very quickly. And you can see that I've created uh, bubbles on the surface of my project. Now, I've already done another one, and I'm gonna remove this guy with my pliers, and I'm going to fire this one. I really like this one because it has a lot of bubbles for you to see. So now it's ready to be fully fired, and we are gonna take it through all of the stages. You'll notice this has a chalky appearance, we want it to be glossy when we're done. So let's get to firing this H2O component. At this point, you are hitting the copper piece with the tip of your, your flame. You want to be right in there. You can see that the enamel paint is darkening a little bit. That tells us that it's going through the, the stages of fusing to the color that's underneath it. And I think it's really important to examine the piece as you're firing to make sure that you are seeing it get to that glossy stage. And I'm going to stop firing right now. You can see that the uh, enameling paint has gone from chalky to gloss. Now, it is ready to be removed from the kiln brick. I'm sorry, from the trivet. And you can simply let it sit up there uh, to cool down. And I love this piece. I love that green. Now, we have another technique that uses the paints. And it's the salted enamel technique. And I love this particular technique because it's something that I learned in high school. And we have our project. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that wa watery paint mixture again to it. Then we're going to add salt to it. We're going to allow it to dry. And then we're going to fire it. So what I'd like for you to see is adding that green paint, a little bit of water. And we're adding uh, the same color that we worked with in the, uh, with the other technique. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of salt. And I'm going to just place it right on there. And the salt is going to actually absorb the water and the, uh, the paint. It's going to be drawn to the salt. Now, I'm going to let that air dry. So I'm going to remove this guy and let him air dry. But I've already got one that is ready to go. And you can see him right over here. So we are going to fire this piece. And we want to fire it to the point where the salt actually is embedded into the surface of the glass. Now, you might notice that the salt wants to hop off the piece. Don't be alarmed by that. But it's uh, for that reason that you might want to work on a surface that's protected, either on a cookie sheet or, in my case, I'm using a glass surface right now. So it is fired. It's settled in. Now, you do not quench this piece. You allow it to cool completely. And I'm going to take it actually off the kiln brick and allow it to cool. Now, I have a piece that was fired and has been cooled. And I'm going to immerse it into some water. And I'm going to allow it to sit in there. And the salt is actually going to dissolve. And when the salt dissolves, you're left behind with texture and color. And it's just beautiful. So I encourage you to take both of these techniques and really um, explore different colors uh, as you work with the acrylic enamel uh, paints. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, both of the, uh, rather all three of the techniques that I've showed you today.